we are going to move on over to the companies now. Um, what are we going to do about a about an hour of silver companies? So there's four silver companies we're going to be hearing from. First one is called Defiance Silver Corp. Um, this is a forty million dollar um, silver exploration and development company with assets in Mexico. Uh, they trade as DEF uh, over in uh, Toronto on the Ventures Exchange, and also D4E over here in uh, Frankfurt. Uh, Doug Cavey, their uh, VP of uh, Exploration is right there. He's coming up to the stage. So Doug, please take it away. You've got about 12 minutes for the presentation and three minutes for questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll just uh, jump right into it. I'm not the VP of Exploration, Executive Vice President. Uh, no, it doesn't matter because uh, I'll get through the material anyways. But thank you very much. And uh, Peter gave an excellent talk as well. Uh, hopefully he'll have some space on his list for us after we uh, show him what's going on here. So um, really there's four things, you know, I'm here from Defiant Silver, but uh, I think these four things really, or four or five things really apply to any, uh, any junior mining, any exploration company that you need to be successful in the exploration industry in the mining and development industry. And that's number one, you need to have some good assets. And uh, we have a robust resource base. We have great assets. We're in a tier one mining jurisdiction and we have been actively showing that there's a lot of room to move these assets and build on the actual value of the properties. Uh, you need to have a team of people that have done this before. You need to have a team of people that understand the mining life cycle, that understand the mergers and acquisitions cycle, that understand what does a uh, deposit on surface look like underground? What does a mine look like when you're in operation? And how does that translate to an exploration asset? And we have that team of people and very strong track record of both exploration, mining, development, financing, capital markets, taking projects from M&A into mining situations. And I think you see that with what we've been doing in advancing our assets. Um, you need to be using modern techniques. It's not rocket science in that, you know, mining methods are generally the same as they have been for the last 500 years. You know, you can get up percentage points on recoveries. We have do, new technologies for processing wastewater, for processing tailings. But you do need to look at what is going on with the uh, advancement of technologies and applying them, you know, like resource modeling, 3D modeling, different types of geophysical analysis. And you've got to be able to work them up to a drill status and you have to be comfortable with drilling your properties. And so while we may do things a little bit slower, we have about a 90% hit rate when we drill the Veda Grande because we have a super strong team developing these targets and they're experts, they're world-class geologists and they're experts in what they're doing. And you need to have a strong fi uh, financial position. Uh, obviously, it takes money. We're an exploration company, uh, so you need to be able to raise money. You need to be able to allocate capital correctly. You need to be able to spend your money split between acquiring the right properties, having the right technical team, but then also being able to you know, execute on your exploration strategy. And we have been uh, fortunate to both have a strong treasury right now, but as well been able to execute on our milestones over the last 18, actually 24 months. And that can, that's quite evident in our uh, track record and what's been you know, delivered as news flow. So, we are a Mexico-focused exploration and development company. We have two principal assets. They're both district-scale properties. We like to think of them both as standalone assets, and I think that's what you'll see happen. I'm going to talk mostly about uh, the silver space right now, and largely because we haven't been working on Topal due to some litigation. So. Uh, 12 months ago, just about 12 months ago, we were subject to fraud in Mexico, and we're currently in litigation alongside with the Mexican government who's on our side and litigating against uh, some basically con artists who tried to take our license away from us. We don't exactly know how long it's going to take, but we do have the full support of the Secretary of Economy and the Mexican mining industry, and so we do believe and are quite confident of a favorable outcome and hopefully within the next 12 months. With that aside, let's talk about Zacatecas. So Zacatecas, we have a district scale land package. It's built up of four assets. We're the second largest landowner in a historical billion ounce silver camp with active mines, our next door neighbors mining at 4,400 tons per day underground capstone mining. We're right next to the world-class uh, Fresnillo Mining District. It's the world's largest primary silver mine and right next door to them is Juan Escipio. Our four projects represent a full lifeline of exploration. So we have resource building, we have an active resource drilling campaign going on right now. We have, uh, we'll call it early exploration, but discovery-focused exploration because we made some new discoveries on ground that we optioned last year. We'll be following up on that, building out on that system. And then we have early exploration both along strike with the active Cozumine mine and then the Panuco asset in the north, which is a little bit of a different flavored system. Capital structure is relatively straightforward. Uh, we have about five and a half million dollars in the bank, uh, 280, 200, or sorry, 228 million shares outstanding. 
Uh, fully diluted, 260 million shares. Uh, management and insiders, and uh, you know, key key insiders on about 35% of the stock. Fully diluted, uh, our insiders in the company about six and a half percent of the stock. So a nice core group of shareholders holding about 40%. So tightly and philosophically aligned, and so we're able to be quite active in our shareholder communication and outreach with these uh, with these key investors as well. Uh, trade's pretty good, anywhere from 200,000 to 2 million shares a day. And uh, back to those four points, one of the things that I think is really important as well with a company is that you have liquidity so that companies, or you can get in, you can build a position, but then also you can trade it. You have to be able to make money in the mining market. And so we're quite proud of having that high volume so that you can build a position in the market. So Kai and the team at SOAR uh, made this uh, a really good graph for us. It's quite interesting. And the reason we bring it up is because every time we put out good news, our stock goes down. And every time we put out bad news, our stock goes up. So there's no rhyme or reason to it. We've got two discoveries we've made. We've built the highest grade results in the Veda Grande. And of course, we had this uh, illegal transfer of mining concessions. And the stock went up after the illegal transfer of mining concessions. Zacatecas. So stepping right into the meat of the thing here, I'm pretty happy about this. So here's a painting from the 1700s. This shows how big the city was in the 1700s. It has always been one of the most important mining districts in Mexico. It's a historic billion ounce silver producer. It uh, was found in the 1500s and still produces today. It's uh, over a billion ounces at 900 grams per ton has been produced here. And we're right next to the world-class Fresno mining district. So Zacatecas State itself is one of the best mining jurisdictions globally. When you look around, our neighbors are some of the largest mining companies in the world. Uh, most recently, Nico Eagle stepped in on a joint venture with Tech on the San Nicolas deposit. It was a $580 million direct investment into the San Nicolas deposit for 50% of the asset. On the other side of us is Mag Silver in Fresnillo. That is the world's largest primary silver mining camp. Fresnillo produced about 25 million ounces of silver last year. Mag Silver took their project from a discovery into production in less than 10 years, or just about 10 years. And they have, uh, I think, produced 7 million ounces of silver in quarter one. So they will become the world's largest primary silver mine in the next 12 months. In the north is Penasquito. That represents about 20% of Newmont's gold equivalent ounces. We have La Colorada, which is Pan American Silver, one of their largest underground operations. And then you look around, Grupo Mexico, Minera Frisco, up in the north, Orla Mining's Camino Rojo, which is Mexico's newest open pit gold mine. It is truly a tier one mining jurisdiction with some of the largest asset types, and we're surrounded by them. Sitting right in the middle is us and Capstone Mining, our next door neighbors with their 4,400 ton per day Cozumine mine, which will expand to 7,000 tons per day. So here's our district scale land package. We're the second largest landowner in this district. We have done that through a series of acquisitions, uh, both with private and public companies. We acquired Mag Silver's licenses, and then we acquired Pan American's licenses. And in the Pan American's licenses, we made a discovery last year. Um, our backstop and what we believe is this is like Fresnillo from the 1960s. So in 1960s, Fresnillo was out of ore. And until 1975, they were really looking everywhere for mill feed. And they found Santo Nino. And the rest is history. They went on to produce about 6 billion ounces of silver since then. But up until that point, this district had produced more silver than the Fresno camp. And nobody's done any district consolidation since then. So that was our key focus, is to consolidate the district to build up you know, stronger pillars outside of the Veda Grande vein system. So the Veda Grande is uh, the legacy asset in the company. It's what we acquired from a private Mexican mining company. Uh, it represents a resource build-out project. It is one of the most well-known vein systems in Mexico. It has produced 150 million ounces of silver historically, and we think there's a lot more to be found, and currently we're drilling this asset with both an exploration but resource build-out focus. Here is a picture found in 1548 by Hernan Cortez's son-in-law. It was uh, an active mine for almost 500 years. Um, you can see down there that portal's the Parisima Tunnel. We're drilling below that or drilling below that tunnel right now as we speak. We're about 700 meters into a drill hole below that tunnel, and it represents only a fraction of our land ownership in the district. So that red box is where the resource area is. That's the historical San Acasio mine. I won't talk too much about the numbers that we're drilling right now mostly just what our thesis is, and that is the resource represents only a fraction of what is still an uh, intact vein system that we've found at least 300 meters below the resource area. And these two drill holes right here are about 10 times the cutoff grade of our resource estimate. So still something that we would consider to include into the resource estimate, which we are underway working on right now. The 
really nice thing about working in a 500 year old mining camp is you have the benefit of some of the best infrastructure globally. Here's a photo that I took of the drill. You drive to the property in six minutes from the city center. It's 20 minutes from an international airport. There's a power line right there. That's one of the highest grade drill holes we've drilled on the property next to an open pit. And in the background of that, um, in the background of that image there is a thousand ton per day mill with a per fully permitted tailings facility that our neighbors own. Within 50 kilometers of this asset, there's 25,000 tons of milling capacity. And a lot of mills are looking for mill feed right now. And this ore type obviously is uh, possible to mine because of the, you know, the proof of concept of 500 years of mining history. But right next door to us, Capstone Mining is mining 4,400 tons per day. And they're down 1,000 meters into their system. And we've gotten almost not much lower than 400 meters below ours. So the vertical profile of mineralization is quite long here. And so the proof of concept, I think, is done with uh, Capstone. And we're going to continue to step down this system. Lucita was an acquisition that we did with Pan American Silver. We have an option to acquire 100%. There are partners on this asset as it's the only property in our portfolio we can't acquire the NSR off of. So our first drill campaign on the Palenque asset, our Palenque vein system came back with up to three kilograms per ton silver, mineable widths over about a four kilometer strike length. So we walked through the whole system and just tested it with drill centers across the whole system. In some of the last drill holes, I think it was the second last drill hole we drilled here, we also hit a blind discovery called the uh, in, uh, 2210, drill hole 2210. It's a 50 meter wide zone, contact style mineralization. It has three separate vein zones grading up to 800, 780, uh, 37 grams in one hole, 600 grams in another hole, 400 grams in one hole. We only have one hole into this thing and that target we think represents a pretty wide uh, target because this contact runs for you know, kilometers. And in the north, we have the Panuco project. So Panuco is a um, early stage project. However, our neighbors have a resource that they've drilled up to the property boundary and those veins have continue onto the property boundary and have been drilled by Pan American Silver. So we know that that at least vein system continues onto our property boundary. Um, they recently put out some drill holes in the northern part of the property, our neighbors, on our property boundary and drilling another vein system that also extends into our property boundary and we have uh, never drilled it and we've done a lot of work on it recently and we like that because that's this, uh, this Trace Crusades vein system and that's up to 100 grams per ton, sorry, that's up to 500, 1200 grams per ton silver uh, but every red dot you see on that image there is uh, 100 to 500 grams per ton silver at surface. So a uh, big wide vein system, never been drilled, and it does represent that you know, earlier stage, but lifeline and pipeline of exploration targets. So this is a district scale opportunity in a world-class mining jurisdiction. There's not many of them around. We have the Santa Casio Veda Grande vein system. As I said, we're redoing the resource estimate. We're you know, vertical profile at least two times below the current resource estimate. Uh, we have targets to test that go much deeper than where, where we're at right now. And we look to update that resource estimate in the next 12 months. And then we have the Lucita and Palenque vein systems, which we have as represent kind of earlier stage targets, but we have, you know, de-risked them to the point that we're drilling high grade material in new discoveries. That's a photo of one of the drill zones that we're in. We have a partnership with Major Drilling. We work uh, quite actively with them, but you can see what this area looks like. That's an open pit mine. We're drilling right next to it. We're drilling below it. And some of the highest grade holes of the entire, you know, the entire camp come from this area, which was actually started mining in the 1500s, one of the first areas that uh, Wanda Toluca came and started mining. So what's our strategy? Uh, we do discovery focused geoscience and we're very good at it. We have a team of experts that are doing this for you know, cumulatively over 100 years, have found millions and millions and millions of ounces of silver, millions of ounces of gold, and have put them through mills. We're fully financed to do our exploration campaign to take our project right now through an updated resource estimate, and our goal is to add ounces to an already advanced asset. It's a pretty straightforward philosophy, but that philosophy works for us and it has worked for us in the past and the success that we've had with other projects in Mexico, taking them from M&A to asset sales and they have now become uh, producing op operations. So with one minute left, we have a couple of, uh, mi or a minute for questions. I do encourage you guys to follow us on social media. We have a lot of really good videos. We have lots of, uh, you know, drone footage. Kai was down on site. He put an awesome video together. Um, you can, you know, Follow us, see what we're doing, and we are just wrapping up a 5,000 meter program. So do keep your eyes out for some of the drill, upcoming drill results that are coming out, you know, over the next four to six months. So.
that question. Um, Mexico seems to be becoming a, a, a more and more challenging jurisdiction in terms of um, nationalization of other commodities. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you experience the, the political situation here? So, I mean, I guess one of the things to look at is what uh, that slide that we're at. So mining is the largest contributor to GDP of the state of Zacatecas. Zacatecas is the largest silver producing state in Mexico and Mexico is the largest silver producing country in the world. The role of mining and the understanding and mentality around natural resources by Mexican citizens, particularly in Zacatecas, is strong. Um, like any country, revision of your mining law is pretty, uh, pretty important, and that's what we're seeing right now is amendments to the current mining law. There's a lot of negative press around that, but at the same time, there's also, I think, a lack of understanding of what's happening. I'm not a legal expert, so I'm not going to comment on the actual fundamentals of it. Um, We've had a lot of success. We've got permitted, operate, permitted projects. We have support from the local communities. We're investing a lot of money in the city of Zacatecas. We try and keep all of our staff to be Mexican uh, nationals. We try and buy all of our products from Zacatecas City. Uh, we try to invest as much as we can in the community because as guests of Mexico, I think it's the right thing to do is to have a strong program of social relationships with the country. Um, we've had a very positive working relationship in Mexico, contrary to some of, uh, you know, some of the maybe negative press that's going on right now. All right. Thank you so much for doing this.